What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Today I'm here with professional angler, Randy Blockett, and we actually just got done fishing on Lake Stockton in Missouri. And this morning it was raining like crazy, thunderstorms, everything, and so we didn't want to do any audio recording on the lake, and so we just have the video, and so because we weren't really talking that much during our footage, we wanted to kind of break down what we did today, how we caught our fish, and how we competed in a shallow fishing versus offshore fishing battle. So Randy, how's it going and how was your day? Oh man, it, it actually went pretty good. You know, we, uh, I think we didn't get on the water for like one o'clock this afternoon. So we only fished like four hours. Yeah. You know, we came off, it was been raining, pretty, you know, pretty hard thunderstorm all morning. And um, I, like I said, in this particular uh, episode here, you know, I was gonna focus on fishing shallow, Johnny's gonna fish offshore. And I was a little bit concerned because the water level has, it's actually dropped five or six feet here in the last couple weeks. It was way up in the willow trees, like you'd have six, seven foot of water in the bushes. And today there was actually maybe six inches of water in the willow, in the willow trees and the buck brush. So anytime you have that drastic of a drop, you know, it's always a little bit transitional. But one of the things that I found about summertime fishing, shallow fishing is that anytime you have a quick drop in water level like you do right now when that water temperature is over 75 degrees those fish will go from that flooded cover to like the closest hard cover that they have in the area so what i did is i ran up the river uh, you know quite a ways up it to where it actually flattened out where there was a lot of bushes and i started concentrating on um, pitching some of the isolated stumps and wood laydowns on the flats and uh, it was total old school. I mean, this is as old school as it gets. Half ounce black and blue jig, um, zoom, super super chunk trailer, um, big bulky jig, 25 pound test, Seaguar and Vizx line, mega bass flipping stick, just pitching it around those laydowns and logs. And they were shallow. The water visibility was probably, I'm guessing six inches where I was fishing. Water depth was probably only maybe 12 to 15 inches. And you'd pitch it in there, and if there was one there, you'd hop it one time, and your line would start swimming out. So you're in the middle of summer, Andy. Why? I think a lot of guys would be surprised that you're catching fish on a jig in a six inches of water in the middle of summer. Is that something that you normally do? Is that something people can find across the country? Or is that pretty rare for right here? No, I think it's typical. Anytime you have these reservoirs where you have, where the upper creek arms and the upper river portions have some stained water, um, there's always bluegills up there. There's always threadfin shad a lot of times. Um, that's where the cover's at. You know, you've got, you've got shallow cover and you've got the dirty water, which, you know, gives them a little bit more security. Now, if the water visibility was like two foot where I was fishing, those fish wouldn't have been there. But, you know, you, since you've got six inches of water visibility and 12, 15 inches of water, um, there's a certain population of fish that live in that situation all year long. They're just, it's just a different mentality of bass. You know, these are isolated fish. You, they're not grouped up. They're just, they're rogue fish that set up on the best piece pieces of cover and on the you'll see some on the video here but you know there's always a prime piece of cover down a stretch of bank there, there may be one little stump or one little lay down that's a little bit more complex maybe just an, a few more inches of water and that's usually where the fish were now I started out doing that and I caught several nice ones uh, pitching the jig which was really nice because it's, it's like in today's world of fishing we don't get a chance to just do the old school black and blue jig flipping too much it's like when it comes on that comes around I really enjoy it but what was happening is after I sort of ran out of cover up there there was there, it was isolated cover what I was fishing and um, I sort of you know fished most of it and I thought I'd maximize the area and I started coming out of the creek and what I did is I went to the first channel bank out from the flat, like the first deep water in the back of that creek. And I started paralleling those steep banks, uh, the steep rocky banks with this mega bass Z crank right here. And uh, this is this crankbait runs about, oh, probably four to five foot deep, I'm guessing like that. You know, sort of a chartreuse shad pattern. Water visibility again was probably, I'm gonna guess anywhere from six to 12 inches on this particular channel bank. And they started eating it really good. You know, just, they weren't really, really around any type of wood. There was, there were some isolated laydowns. In fact, the biggest fish I caught today, um, you'll see it on the video, there was a, a laydown green tree on this channel bank and I pitched the jig in the laydown green tree and caught that biggest one. But other than that, um, this little mega bass Z crank just parallel in the rocky channel banks on the way out of that creek. Um, just medium fast retrieve, keeping the bait like in probably three to five foot of water. And um, there was probably about a 
no, I'm saying three or four hundred yard stretch that had, uh, you know, the the larger rock, like the first deep water coming out of that flat, the larger rock, and that's where those fish were setting up at. That's so cool, and it's so cool that you were able to go back in there and catch some quality fish, mm -hmm. really yeah. good ones. And you yeah. mentioned that there was a tournament this last weekend, right? What was the weights in that? Yeah, there was a, a tournament here the day before yesterday, and a friend of mine got fourth place with 12 pounds. I think 15 pounds won the tournament, so, uh, you know, I feel pretty good about, you know, what we found today, considering, and, you know, when you relate it to that, the, to the tournament they had here, but that's the thing about tournament fishing. It's just like, it, or fishing in general, it's all about decisions that you make. I mean, I made the decision to, to, to basically, you know, go to the upper reaches um, of the lake today, and it turned out to be the right decision, you know, and that, that's, you just never know till you fish through an area to know if it's going to be productive. When I went up there, I didn't, you know, I thought maybe I'd get a few bites, but I didn't realize it would be as good as it was because um, they were biting pretty good up there in that, that water today. That's awesome. That's so cool. And that footage is great. Yeah. And well, my day could not have gone differently from yours. As Randy mentioned, I focus on fishing offshore. So I was trying to use my electronics, graphing for fish, getting off the bank. And when we started the day today, it was just raining like crazy, thunderstorms, cloud cover. And for any offshore fisherman, you know that those conditions aren't necessarily ideal. When you think cloudy skies, rain, stuff like that, that's shallow water fishing, prime conditions. And a lot of times what happens in those conditions is the bass start to spread out and they'll actually suspend and just roam on offshore structure, offshore points, things like that. And that's what I found them doing today. And when I actually got out in the boat, first thing it did is it rained like six inches in the bottom of my boat. The bilge pumps are going everywhere. My graphs decided to stop working. I had to restore factory defaults four times today while I was in the boat. It was just like a nightmare day. And I also realized I didn't even have Navionics for Lake Stockton. So I had no contour lines going out today. So going out, I felt like everything was against me. And really when I was maybe about an hour left in my day, I was thinking, man, I'm gonna come in and say offshore bite was bad. They weren't biting out there and Randy crushed them. So that's what we need to talk about, catch them up shallow. But what happened is that the conditions actually changed halfway through the day. We had thunderstorms and clouds in the morning, but about halfway through the day, the sun started to pop out. And a lot of the areas where I was trying to find fish were on main lake points with channel swings by them. That's just a classic offshore structure spot that you want to be looking for on any lake across the country. Deep water next to shallower water. And I was seeing that there was actually a thermocline that had developed already offshore. For those of you who don't know what the thermocline is, it's basically this band of water where the high oxygen water and the low oxygen water mix. And with that thermocline, it was sitting at 17 feet of water. That means that the only place those fish are going to be offshore is above that thermocline. You can see the thermocline on your unit? Yeah, on the yeah. unit. And I'll show it here on the recording. You actually see that band of line if you just crank that sensitivity up. And I knew that all those fish were going to be in 17 foot of water or less. Well, when I went out there, I started graphing these points and just started seeing fish scattered out everywhere. Couldn't really get a feel for what was going on. I actually caught one fish schooling on a spy bait, and I had one fish that came off on a drop shot that I just fished vertically fishing underneath the boat. And it was kind of just a chaos day, a mess. Well, about two hours in the day, the sun actually started popping out. And whenever the sun gets out on these offshore areas, it will actually cause those fish to stop roaming and suck them into any sort of cover, whether it's rocks or brush on these offshore points, offshore ledges. And on Lake Stockton, there is a ton of brush. And there's actually these state placed brush piles from the Missouri Game and Fish. And you can actually download these brush piles onto your fish finder. And I'll just put the link down in the description. I'll also put a video out on how to transfer those waypoints into your fish finder. And so I put 450 brush piles on my unit before I went out fishing today. And so I had all the brush piles in the world I needed. And I knew this time of year with the brush, these fish were going to be using that when that sun came up. And so basically for me, it was a waiting game until that sun popped out to go fish those brush piles. Right when that sun popped out, I started graphing brush and I started noticing that every brush pile I found that was in 17 feet of water or less above that thermocline by a main lake point with a channel swing on it, the fish were just in them. And first one I pulled up to, I lost about a two and a half, two and three quarter pounder on a crankbait. Fished a few more, didn't get any bites. Some of them were too deep. Some of them seemed to be too shallow. I came back to the brush pile where I actually lost my first fish, lost another one on a football jig. So I'd lost two, two and a half to three pounders in a football jig and a crankbait. And these were how deep, the piles? About 16, 17 foot deep. 
so not super deep. They weren't like the 30, 40 foot tops. But really, I was still feeling discouraged about and three hours, three and a half hours into the day. I had about half an hour left, and I had not found really more than one brush pile because I only was looking for an hour and a half with that sun. That sun was only out for a very short period of time. But I knew that if I could find a brush pile and 17 for the water, creek channel swinging close to it, and I could see some fish in that brush pile, I could catch them. So I just started running every single brush pile I had marked on my GPS for the last hour of the day. Graft over them, that one's in 25, don't worry about it. Next one, that one's in 20, didn't worry about it. I finally found a brush pile that was actually out in front of a public boat ramp. And one thing I always love to do is to go fish in front of public boat ramps for release fish. And for whatever reason, there's always one dude. There's always a dude on your lake, you know who you are, who drops a brush pile at the end of that boat ramp. And I graphed over the end of that thing and there were just fish everywhere. And well, let me show you what happened because I got a lot of great footage from today. Go. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, big one. There we go. Stay on their fish. Oh, there we go. Good fish right there. Finally got one in the boat on the football jig. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Running my favorite go-to pattern when I'm fishing in the summer and I don't know where to fish. I just go to every boat ramp on the lake, graph the ends of them, and look for brush piles off the ends of the boat ramps. For whatever reason, everyone always leaves a brush pile on the end of boat ramps, especially the ones that stick right out in the middle of the lake. There's usually, usually some really good fish on them. That's a good one right there. Look at this guy in the scales and see what he weighs. Go solid three and a half pounder right there. That's what I'm talking about. First cast down there on the end of that boat ramp. I'll show you guys what it looks like on the graph. Man, that is a good fish. Woo, football jig, baby. Oh man, there we go. So that is what would be my fifth keeper bite. I've actually got all my fish in the boat. And I'm really happy with that given I only had about four hours today to actually get out here, find the fish with my electronics and fish for them. I've only been fishing for probably an hour, maybe an hour and a half of my four hours here just because I've had to spend so much time graphing and looking for fish. But now that I've found a few different areas, if I was going to be fishing for a full day, I could kind of rotate this spot right here, a couple of the brush piles I found that had some fish in them, maybe add a few more brush piles here and there as well, and I would have a really good, solid strategy to catch some big summer bass out here in Lake Stockton. Go. Oh man, last minute heroics right here. Got about 10 minutes before I have to check in with Randy. And I found a spot, guys, that's what I'm talking about. Another good one. Get up in here, fish, yes! Choking that jewel, fish the moment, brush pile jig, that's what I'm talking about right there. Good fish. Oh man, solid one. Actually, this is crazy, guys. There's actually a coal pin hole in that fish's mouth. These are released fish off this boat ramp right here. And I am sure these fish just got released from tournaments. They're all solid, good keepers. And they're just pulling routes to the end of this boat ramp. And that's where they're hanging out. So getting some released fish in the boat. And there's a bunch of good ones down there. I'm gonna get this kind of scales. I need to keep getting back in there. Cause I want to probably get a limit or something here real fast before I go in and check in with Randy two and three quarter pounder, really nice fish. That's what I'm talking about. If I'd add that to the fish I'd lost, I'd have a really good limit going right now. Be right back down there, get another one. Man, that three quarter ounce football jig, guys, when it gets sunny like this, they absolutely destroy it. That crankbait was better when we had the cloud cover, the overcast skies, but once that sun popped out, that football jig is just a can't beat bait. And it's a big fish bait as well. If you look at this jig, we have it tied with some thicker flat rubber that is just a little bit bulkier profile, has a double wire weed guard as you guys have heard about, and it just absolutely pins them and stays out of the brush. I've been throwing the same jig all day, haven't lost it. I actually broke a rod trying to pull one of these jigs out of a brush pile. I didn't lose a jig, didn't break my line, I broke the rod before I lost that jig. So if it tells you anything, this jig will not 
get hung and you will not lose it. You can just pull it straight out of there and keep fishing, keep catching good ones. Let's get another one here real quick. Another just good one, guys. Oh my gosh, how the day can turn around. I was moping and complaining about how this was not my day, and then boom, one spot changes all of that. Another fish broke me off as I was swinging them in. Another good one, probably another two and three quarter pounder. So he's got in the scales, and he get back down there, guys. That's every single cast. I actually missed two more fish off this exact spot on my last two casts. I need to get another cast in there, two and a half pounder. Really nice fish. Skinny this one. Need to retie and get that bait back in that brush pile. Oh man, they're just, oh, they're eating that jig. I love a three quarter ounce jig, guys. If you do not go pick up one of these three quarter ounce jigs from Jewel that I helped design, you're missing out. It has the perfect hook, the perfect weed guard, just the skirt. I mean, I'm just telling you guys, I can't even talk about it right now. So I just have to get this bait back in there. So I'm biting every cast. And I only have like three more minutes before I'm checking with Randy. I think I'm gonna be a little bit late. You know, that's fine, but I'm just getting them every cast. <laughs> Another one on the jig. Oh, they're all just cookie cutters. I'm telling you guys, just all such good fish. Oh, yes. This one's a little bit better right there. That's what I'm talking about. Nice fish right in the top of the mouth. Got our <laughs> hook mark in them. Getting these release fish. Not a problem for me. That's four fish now. <laughs> Ten minutes. This day was so bad. And it turned out to be so good. You guys just need to keep that positive attitude. Two and three quarter pounder. Another nice fish. Just keep grinding. If you only have, even if you only have four hours to fish, you can find them if you use your electronics and you kind of use the process I showed you in this video. You can get on these fish and put them in the boat quick offshore in the summertime. And, and if I, I need to get one more to get my limit, then I'll go hang out with Randy. But man, that is a beautiful fish. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get back down there. Man, it's every cast on the spot, guys. I cannot even stop to talk, explain what I'm doing. Literally, I'm just casting that football jig out there, letting it sink to the bottom and setting the hook. There's just brush down there, there's rock, there's a bunch of bait. It's just perfect. I mean, it's not like I'm doing anything special. I am hopping the jig a little bit. I'm not really dragging it on the bottom. And I don't know if that seems to be helping. I don't think it does right now. I think it's just get that jig down there. They like that profile. They like the fall rate, whatever it is. They're choking it. And, oh, this one. They're just down there. They're just down there. Got him. Black shaky head for the win. That was a big one. Just a nice one, not a big one. There's number five right there. Getting the boat. So I'm talking about number five on the shaky head. Now I can go in and brag to Randy about how I had an awesome afternoon after struggling for three hours, 50 minutes, and then in 15 minutes, <laughs> turn the day around. So I'm talking about, not a big one right there, let's get them on the scales, but they would st they stopped eating that football jig. I caught four in a row on the football jig, and they just kind of stopped touching that. And so I switched it up, this one, two pounds, five ounces, two and a quarter pounder. Nothing huge, but that's a great way to finish up the limits. That's what I'm talking about. Nice fish, put him back. Got him on just a black shaky head. That is my favorite follow-up bait to that football jig. If I stop getting bit on the football jig on the spot, I'll just take this little black shaky head. It is a six and a half inch zoom trick worm, all black with a three eight ounce shaky head. I threw it down that brush pile and boom, first cast in there, got a fish to bite. And I'm actually gonna leave him biting here, guys. I have to get back to Randy. So I guess I'll see you guys back with him. And it's just, oh man, I love fishing offshore. I wonder what he's done today. Let's see what he got. I mentioned earlier that I found the brush piles that I'm fishing today by downloading their GPS location off of the Missouri Game and Fish website. And this is something you can do in a lot of different states, and all you have to do is type in your lake name, like Stockton Lake, plus the words fish attractors. 
And when you put that into Google, a lot of times it'll be taken to your Game and Fish website. And you can actually look for the link that says Fish Attractor GPX Files. This works in a lot of different states and I've done it across the country. And if you click on this link, you'll be taken to a page where you can actually download these zip files, which are these GPX files. It's the files that a fish finder reads to actually encode GPS data. And you can see that there are a ton of different lakes that you can choose from here in Missouri. And you can actually see the fish attractor locations and download the waypoints directly to your fish finder and it'll show up on your Navionix map or your Lake Master map on your unit when you're on the lake. You don't have to worry about hand typing in all the GPS coordinates. And so I just went down here to Stockton Lake, downloaded this file, and then I uploaded it onto my fish finder. And I've actually talked about how to do this in one of my previous videos about how to transfer waypoints from Google Earth to your fish finder. I'll link that video down in the description below. Watch it. If you haven't seen it, it'll really help you with Google Earth and it will help you learn how to transfer the GPS coordinates from your Game Fish website. And this will give you a ton of different brush piles to go check out. And I catch a lot of fish off of these Game and Fish fish attractors on lakes all across the country. So yeah, that's really how I, I called them, Randy. I mean, I, they were just in those brush piles. And when you find the right brush pile offshore in the summertime, you can get right in a hurry. Yeah. And I mean, I had like 13, 13 and a half pounds for those fish. If I had landed my other ones, I probably would have had somewhere close to that 14 pound mark, which is probably pretty similar to what you had. Yeah, and that's an exceptional day. And it's like, you know, the thing about that, it's like whether you're fishing like Johnny did today or like I did, it's basically making a commitment to that. Because, you know, for you to be successful that you have got to spend your time on your electronics looking for that, th 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 that those brush piles that are set up just in the right specific situation and it's the same if you're fishing shallow you may not get a lot of bites but you have to find and commit to that type of cover and you can't just like spend an hour or two doing it and bail out and try something else you have to make a commitment in the summertime of the year a lot of times to do well and it's really tough especially when you only have four hours to make that decision of what to do and so yeah. What you did is you went to your confidence baits. So you picked up a black and blue jig and crankbait. And you went up shallow into areas where you felt confident you could find fish. Mm -hmm. And I did the same thing. I went to those main lake channel swing points, the most obvious places on the map. I used those game and fish brush piles that I knew were there. And I just tried to run as many of them as I could until I determined the right depth yeah. and the right type of structure. And it both worked out for us. We found the fish pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because today both were successful. And I would say we probably tied probably in weight yeah. and fish catches, but we did it in a completely different way, which is right. awesome. And that, that should be, you know, really encouraging to a lot of anglers because you can fish the way you like to fish. You know, just because it's summertime, um, you know, you don't have to get out and fish deep. And, you know, if you like to fish deep, it's there. If you like to fish shallow, there's that option too, almost on every lake you go to. Now, you know, some at certain times of the year may be a little better than others, and it may be tilted one direction or other, but, uh, you know, there's always more than one way to catch them, for sure. And like Granny said, it's getting in your comfort zone and trying to find what you like to do. So for example, I have more confidence in the world in this three quarter ounce football jig than any other bait. And so if I'm going to go out and try to catch five fish any time of the year, summer, winter, fall, I'm gonna pick up a three quarter ounce football jig and go to town. You're probably similar at certain times of the year, but I would say if you had one confidence bait, it's probably more of that shallow jig and crankbait. Would that sound about yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, that, you know, the, the, a bait like this, now there's a lot of different modifications that you can have on a big jig like that, color-wise, size-wise, you know, trailers will create different bulk, but basically it's a quality fish bait for the summertime. It's not like a bait you're going to go out and get a lot of bites on. Not that you can't. You can occasionally if, if, if situations are perfect, but it's basically a deal where you're going out and if you get five, six, seven, Seven bites a day, you've got a good day because you're going to have some quality fish in that in that mix. And it's the same thing with the football jig. I mean, we're both throwing jigs that are half to three quarter ounce, bulky trailers, yeah. moves a lot of water. Really, what I'm doing is I'm just fishing laydowns and trees and 17 for the water. You're fishing laydowns and trees with a jig and two for the water. It's almost the exact same pattern right. if you really think about it. It's just in a different depth. Yeah, and it's getting those fish to fire because, like I said, you, you know, you're probably seeing a lot of fish in and around that brush. Mm -hmm. Some of those fish may be catchable, some may not, based upon, you know, a lot of different factors, timing, angle, whatever, and it's the same with the shallow cover. I mean, if you get to a prime piece of shallow cover, say if you're working down that bank and you've got a, you've got a, a piece of lay down or whatever that's, that's really good looking, it's thick, it's got some dark places on it, it's got some good hiding places, 
you can pretty much tell yourself there's a bass in there. Now you just have to generate that strike, whatever that may be. It may be with the crankbait, it may be with the jig, it may be with the spinnerbait, it may be on the 20th cast instead of the first cast. But when you're fishing shallow water in the summertime, you have to make that commitment to fishing stealthy, uh, make multiple casts, and uh, you know really focus on your casting accuracy because that's really key in, in skinny water fishing when it's hot. For sure. Well, Randy, this was a great day despite all the odds. With four hours of fishing, raining cats and dogs, my electronics weren't even working, didn't even contour lines on my grab. Yeah. Man, but we both caught fish and it was it turned out to be a good day. And that just shows don't get discouraged. If your day doesn't go up perfect, if you're facing thunderstorms in the morning or electronic difficulties or whatever, stick it out because if you keep a positive attitude, you're going to be able to catch fish. And if you spin out and let it get to you, you're not gonna catch them regardless of what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You just have to tell yourself all the time, you know, they're always biting somewhere. The fish, if somebody says, well, they just weren't biting today, you know, that's that's the biggest myth in fishing. You know, they're always biting somewhere. It's just, you know, hitting on that right place at the right time with the right technique. And, you know, it's, it's always there every single day. Awesome, Randy. Well, this was a great day. Thanks for joining me today. And next week, we're actually going to be heading out to Grand Lake, and we're going to switch it up a little bit. We're actually going to have Randy go out and fish offshore. And I'm going to be fishing up shallow. Don't know how that's gonna go. I can catch him up shallow. You guys have seen it a little bit, but we're gonna go to Grand Lake and I'm gonna try to replicate a little bit of what Randy did today, maybe with the crankbaits, the jigs up shallow. And I'm sure Randy will be throwing baits like a football jig and deep diving crankbait like, like I was today. And you're probably gonna see very different approaches in the way that Randy attacks the structure, the way he works the baits. Same thing with me. And I think that it's going to be really enlightening both for both of us, yeah. how we do it, and also for you guys as well. So thanks for joining us today on this video. And hopefully it was instructional, informative on summer bass fishing and gave you some confidence, in some new techniques. So again, thanks for joining me today, Randy. And thanks to you guys. And we'll see you all in the next one.